Plastics. I love this stuff. It comes in so many different formulations. You name it, there's a plastic out there that can do it. I want to share with you today five of my favorite types of plastics to use in my builds. I'll talk a little bit about their properties, how to work with them, and what they can be used for. But stay tuned to the end because I want to share with you an important tip on how you can get plastics at a much reduced cost. All right, here we go. First, PVC, polyvinyl chloride. Really common stuff, right? Conduit used for water, running electrical wire. It's great for the maker too. Anything you need a tube for or a rod, you can often use PVC to fill in where you would with a dowel or steel or something like that, particularly things that aren't very load bearing. It can handle some weight, but it does flex. Working with this stuff, use regular tools, hand saws, hack saws, table saw, band saw, all of it cuts it, regular drill bits, nothing special. It will melt and it does burn rather easily, but under normal conditions, you can use PVC in a variety of ways. Another one of my favorites, high density polyethylene. It's the stuff that you see cutting boards made out of. It has a really forgiving surface. It doesn't dull knives, that's why it's using cutting boards. It doesn't tend to scratch easily either, so in surfaces that are gonna come into a lot of contact with stuff, high density polyethylene is great for that. In the sheet form, it's pretty rigid too. It's strong stuff. In thinner applications like this water bottle, even though it squishes, it goes back to its original shape. It comes in a variety of colors. This white, as I just showed you. This sheet is black. Here's a red one. Any color you can imagine, you can get in high density polyethylene. In terms of working with it, you have to be a little careful. It will melt, so you want to use slower speeds, for example, on drilling. You can cut it with a table saw, band saw, regular blades, nothing special there. One thing to note about high density polyethylene, you can't use cyanoacrylate glue to stick it together. It just won't hold. When I made these jaws for my vise and I stuck those magnets in them, I used two-part epoxy and they stay in there really well. Moving on to another plastic. This one you will have seen a lot, especially recently. It's acrylic, commonly known by brand names such as this, Opix, or more commonly, Plexiglass. My son likes to call it flexiglass because it's glass that bends. This has a protective covering on it, but it comes very clear. The art behind me has a sheet of clear acrylic on it. Those splash shields that you see, those are all acrylic. It doesn't have to be clear either. This is a tinted piece. Fantastic. This one is as well. It always comes with this protective coating on it because it does scratch really easily. So applications we're going to be coming into contact a lot with, if you're worried about it being scratched or the integrity of the surface, that might not be a good application for it. There are opaque. This is a white. It will splinter and fracture if you aren't careful. You can cut it. The thinner stuff you usually want to back or if you're going to be running it through, for example, your table saw. It cuts well on the bandsaw and you can cut it by hand. It will melt, so when you're drilling it, slow the speed down and also use a lubricant, preferably water. You can glue it together. Cyanoacrylate glue works really well. There are special formulations of adhesives specifically for acrylic. Acrylic is fantastic. Here's a plastic that I just started working with in the last year. It's known as acetyl, commonly known as Delrin. This is a machinable plastic, so it has a lot more multi-dimensional integrity, much like soft metal. You can mill it, you can machine it, you can route the edges of this stuff, you can drill holes through it, and it maintains its integrity. It's much harder than high-density polyethylene. Uh, it conforms to its shape much more readily than some of these. It doesn't splinter like acrylic. Again, using water as a lubricant when you're doing things like drilling holes in this is a great way to manage it. You can cut this on the table saw, band saw, of course. It's good for applications where you're gonna have a lot of force or a lot of pressure on it and you want it to stay put. That's why it's great for machining. I made this jig out of it for thread inserts. I think I showed that in one of my builds a while back. Looking forward to using this material more. The last plastic I wanna mention is an honorable mention because I haven't used it a whole lot. It is nylon. This is actually a sheet of nylon. You think of nylon often in nylon thread, nylon string. It's also what makes these locks and these nuts work. It's a ring of plastic. Nylon is super smooth. It's great for high friction applications as a result. 
You can cut this stuff again in a handful of ways that you would other materials that I've described today. It's great stuff and I'm looking forward to finding new applications to use nylon for. All right, those are my five plastics that I wanted to mention to you. There's many more. Check them out. Try to figure out how you can incorporate those into your build. The moment you've been waiting for, how can you get plastic on the cheap? Here's a good example. This optics sheet of acrylic, it's 11 by 14 inches and 0.093 inch in thickness. This, if you pick it up at one of the big box stores, it's about $7. It's not too expensive, right? But oftentimes you need a sheet a lot bigger than that. It weighs 0.6 pounds. I can pick this stuff up, scraps and ends, much bigger than this, for $2 a pound at a local plastic manufacturing place. They don't make the plastic, they make things out of plastics, like splash guards. And they always have ends and pieces and cutoffs from all that they're fabricating. And they sell those to the public, people like me, on the cheap, two bucks a pound. So I can get a sheet just like this for a dollar and 20 cents compared to seven dollars. It's less than 20%. And it's not just little pieces. Check this out. I picked this up at my local plastic place, MGM Plastics here in North County, San Diego. This is a 24, I'm sorry, 25 inch by 48 inch sheet. Same kind of stuff as this. I looked that up online. To buy a sheet that big from a big box store, it's over $40. Weighed it, it's six pounds. I paid $12 for that. That's 30% of what it would cost me to buy that in a big box store. Fabricators are just making stuff day and night trying to accommodate the need for these splash guards and everything. So you can go and get acrylic, as well as many of these other plastics that I talked about, for much reduced rates. Do some research, find a place like this, build a relationship with them. I went into MGM a few months ago and I just bought a, I think I bought a little piece of Delrin and they're $10 minimum for credit card. I didn't have any cash on me, they just gave it to me. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right, that's my little piece on plastics. Definitely check it out. Learn a little bit more about the different materials available to you. Definitely check out those places to get it on the cheap and think about incorporating it into your next build. Let me know what you do. Thanks for tuning in.